Hi everyone. Happy Thursday from us here at Stone Stitches in the studio space. Um, I'll start slowly rather than charging straight in, which I have a tendency of doing. Give you a chance to join in. Hey people, nice to see you there. Um, happy Thursday again. I hope you're having a good week, a good day. Uh, anyone over on this side of the world, you've been having some really hot weather, particularly a little bit further to the side over in the UK and in parts of Europe, there's been really, really steamy weather. Um, we had a bit of a heat wave here in Ireland. It is not comparable to a lot of other countries, but for Ireland, it's very hot. And in fact, anyone who's over here um, who was dealing with it realized that when a country is not used to getting any heat of significance, even slightly above normal, and a lot of things don't function. So dormer bungalows, for instance, it's like living in a sauna upstairs, all the things like that. But we're back to normal Irish temperatures now, which is kind of strange, but nice. Uh, it's this morning. It was um, almost cool when it got up, long sleeves on, which... You know, wearing jeans and long sleeves when you haven't worn them for a few weeks feels like a bit of a novelty. It doesn't last very long, but it is initially a novelty. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. If you're part of the Celtic Knits Club, the patterns, of course, got released at the end of last week. And last Friday, I did a live talking through the um, the sweater, the Ulock sweater and the Ulock wrap. If you missed it and you want to hear about them, you can jump in and... Um, if you would like to be part of it, but you missed the main club, the digital edition of the club is always available. You can jump in at any point. So that's all on there. If you're part of the club, keep an eye out for, um, well, don't keep an eye out, sorry. You've already got a Zoom invitation and our Zoom is going to be this Sunday at four o'clock where we're going to talk through the patterns, the different yarns, and just what you can do with the patterns basically is, is what I'm planning and talking about. If you are part of the club and there's anything you're kind of curious about that you'd like to change or you think is going to trip you up in the pattern, send me on a message so I can make sure I can prepare in advance. Um, you'll notice as well here I'm in a slightly different part of the shop and that's because I wanted to stand in front of our wall of buttons over here because over like over the last couple of months we've been adding buttons but last week there was a big batch came in and Nora's been slowly adding them to the website so I just wanted to stand in front of the wall and let you admire them all. Uh, it takes forever to put buttons on a website because they're small little things but there's small variations so even to the extent that there's two of these up they're very, very similar, but you'll see they're slightly different tones. One slightly pinky tone, one slightly bluey, and they have different card numbers. So they are recorded differently. So it means that what seems like it'll only be a few extra products going on ends up being quite a bit. If you are looking for a specific project and you want to match buttons and you can't help from the website, go ahead and send us on a message. Uh, we're always happy to help. Ones that The ones I just showed you there actually would be fantastic for Citrus Dream. So if you've ever seen the Citrus Dream is top down in a fingering weight cardigan. And because it's so lightweight, um, you want to make sure the buttons are light so that it doesn't stretch out the front of it. Uses quite a few buttons because they're closely spaced together, but they're very small buttons. So it's 15 millimeter buttons is what you're looking for. And I don't, these are the smallest we've got in this particular one. These are coconut ones is 18. But if you're doing one that is, this is the one in the smaller size that I used on the pattern. Um, but if you're doing one in green or something that you'd like some bright, interesting green, this is the same one, which is a green one, coconut shell, that is going to work very well with Citrus Dream because that's a 15 millimeter one. So that would be so cute with, and let me just grab the color here. Um, this is avocado, which is one of my favorite vivacious four ply colors. But look how cute that those buttons would actually end up being. Um, with the vivacious four ply so if you're thinking of, of knitting citrus dreams i would i would strongly suggest thinking about the this particular color and matching it with that or 
we've also last week we still got a few kits of the life in the long Gar grass citrus dream um, there's an exclusive a special once off kit and they, i don't have the colors with me they're over there they're also in greens one of them is the bright color green and I, that color would look lovely with the brights for the life in the long grass as well so if you're looking for ideas for adding into um, for adding buttons to cardigans take a good look through the website because there is loads of stuff up there now the other ones we have here is we've got like those ones the coconut i was showing you we've got 18 there's 20 this one is 31 very big ones so these would be kind of big feature buttons if you had something that just had one or two buttons at the top they would be great ones i'm finding myself very attracted to these cutesy little ones look we got tiny little blue hearts and there's a few other heart ones that they're over on the stand there i think but like little wooden heart ones red heart ones just the ones back here are the ones that are on card so it's easier for me to show you because they're all sitting up um, on display behind there now if you have been following me on stolen stitches on the youtube channel you'll know that i've had a vlog going for the last couple of months um, i suppose two months we're on about I want to say episode five, but I've just finished recording the most recent episode and it has been edited and it is scheduled to go live this evening. So pop on, take a look at the, um, the vlog later on this evening. Or if you are, um, if you haven't subscribed, then pop in and subscribe because you'll get a notification as soon as it goes live. So this week we're again talking a little bit about garments in it. Um, one of the things that some of the questions that were coming in were someone had asked me about short rows for neck shaping and how to vary it a little bit more. So I go into a small bit more detail with how you can make more of a scoop neck versus just raising the back of the neck up a little bit. Talking a little about um, not quite reverse engineering, but flipping back and forth between cardigans and sweaters most common kind which might actually even be written into the pattern would be if you had a steaked cardigan where it's knit as a sweater with something along the middle usually some kind of bridging stitches that you'll steak afterwards and someone was asking if you had a steaked cardigan and you wanted to reverse it what would you do so i'm talking a little bit about that and about how to set up stitch patterns for if you do want to steak something that's meant to be a sweater all that kind of stuff um so the, the vlog is a great place to go into detail with that because I can really take a topic and start picking through it um, is, is really good. Last week, last Sunday, I had my last class, my last um, Irish tourism class, um, or I should say knitting tourism class for the summer. And it was a group down in Killarney and it was really nice. It was a group of knitters. Um, and there was a few of them I met before, one in fiber space in DC, another one who had come on both a tour and a retreat with me previously. There was another lady who was a yarn shop owner and the group had one of the nicest knitted little community they had created from this group on a tour. They just, they looked like they were having the time of their life and it was, it made it such a pleasure to come in and teach with them because they were all on the same page and they just, they wanted to hear what I was talking about. So it was, it was really nice. So thank you. If any of you were listening today, I had so much fun last Sunday chatting with you all. Um, Elsa Louise, what adjustment would I make uh, to a circular yoke sweater for a short waist, waisted person? A circular yoke sweater, if you're, armhole depth is the same coming down then you'd leave it um, and the rest of it is going to be fairly similar but I might pop that in for a future question to kind of dig around maybe looking at um, generally if you if your waist is in a different position than the pattern how you go about looking at that and things you can change so um, yeah I'll pop that in for a, um, a vlog question further down the line um, speaking of vlogs normally i've been doing them every two weeks but the episode that was released today is going to be the first the last one in a month because from the 4th of august i'm going to be going away on holidays so it'll mean that the one in two weeks time won't be happening it'll be two weeks after that 
and kind of tied with holidays, both me and Nadia, who does a lot of the social media and community and things online, she's going to be on holidays almost the same time as me. We're in little staggered, but only by a couple of days. So that means Laura is going to be all by herself. Um, so send her a message, just say hello to her. Um, she should be on social media a little bit more than she, she would normally be um, because she'll be kind of popping in and out just in case there's any questions. If there's anything very specific to a pattern that she can't answer, she will just go forward it to me and when I come back, I'll be answering them. But we're going to have a couple of little special exciting things happening on the newsletter to keep Laura excited because Laura loves packing packages. I don't know if any of you know that she and if you've gotten a package over the last year from her, the care she takes in putting it together is considerable and she takes enormous enjoyment from that. So we thought we would make Laura happy while we were away on holidays and we will have some little discounts and sales and things going. So Laura will, you know, she won't be lonely and she won't miss us being away because she'll be so happy packaging, right? That's the plan. <laughs> so if you're not on our newsletter, drop on in and um, you can come in. You'll, you'll just see there's a pop up and there's a banner at the bottom of my website, stonestitches.com, where you can go sign up. Um, if you haven't signed up before, um, you will also get a coupon for a discount to be able to get a pattern if you're already signed up or if you had previously signed up you'd have already gotten that first time around so it only comes once so if you signed up then unsigned and then signed up again it doesn't come out again it just logs whichever one is in the record from the previous one but you would have already gotten it so you're doing good you'll still be getting all the discounts from the newsletter that are going to be popping out over the next few weeks um, so I think, oh, the other thing that Nadia asked me to actually talk to you about is Pinterest. Is that something that any of you actually use out there? Or if you do, is it just to kind of search and kind of pop through? If you are using Pinterest and if you're following me on Pinterest, give me a wave down there or just write a line. I'm just kind of curious as to um, if, if anybody is out there on Pinterest. Because Pinterest is a funny one, isn't it? It's it's um, it's a very good place to search for things and to find images, but it's not necessarily a community, so it's a little bit different. Um, but we're trying to build up the Pinterest a little bit more and kind of feed more of what comes on here at Instagram over there as well. And recently, um, Yep, I'm definitely up there. Just pop over, you'll find stolen stitches up there because um, it, it's something that we had up there, but we hadn't been using an awful lot. So we're trying to increasingly put more content up there. And also the shop has now created kind of um, a link in the back end with Pinterest. So it means that when new products go up and things like that, they should be coming out with an, on a Pinterest board as well, which if you like searching through Pinterest, it can be... Um, uh, it can it can be useful. Uh, Louise, you waste too much time searching. I totally get that. Um, so it, I find that the times I use Pinterest are if I'm looking for um, kind of different styles, different colors. I'm like if I, I just I often have very very specific visual searches that um, that I'm looking for in Pinterest, and it's something that I go on and off on because I go through a phase where. I start using Pinterest for a lot of things, searching through and, you know, creating boards and fantastic for creating mood boards. I've used it quite a bit for that, where I pull up things that relate to what I'm thinking about and be, I can pin it on boards. That's very, very useful. Um, but then outside of that, I tend to use it somewhat sporadically. Um, oh, Nadia has just jumped in there in College Notebook to tell people that I'm as Carol underscore Feller on Pinterest as opposed to Stone Stitches. So if you're looking for Stone Stitches, it's going to be under my actual name. So um, I think that's most of it from, from me today. I should ask Nadia, as you're on here and you're listening to me, is there anything I forgot to talk about today? I think I've covered most stuff. And everyone has agreed that they're going to keep Laura very busy so that she'll have fun packaging while we're away, which I think is really important. And do be aware that it'll be from the 4th, I'm away for two weeks. Um, if you send in pattern queries that you'll probably initially get an autoresponder that I'll get to when I come back. If it's very urgent or if it's something more order related, Laura will of course be here and all of that's going to be kind of happening 
at the same, you know, as it, as it goes along. It's really specific, query specific for me um, that are going to be uh, working. Elsa Louise, did I finish my gray sweater? Was that the Donegal chunky one? Um, if that was the Donegal chunky one, yes, I finished it. I've got the videos ready and I've actually got, um, I've got testers and knitting on it at the moment. So it's being tested up a little bit for the pattern. So that's going to be coming up in the autumn releases. We should actually have, um, there's going to be a couple of other um, chunky patterns that I've re-knit. So we'll kind of have a little mini uh, chunky knits mini collection coming out hopefully in September but I'll make sure you have plenty of warning about that when it's coming. I mean the fun thing about Chunky in autumn is that well it's fun to knit with because it's fast and you can get things out very quick. Um, so hang on someone's asking am I coming to the USA in Florida? No I'm not I'm actually going to Portugal this year I haven't been there before. They of course are also having a heat wave in, in Portugal but as it's going to be another 10 days from now before we travel keep my fingers crossed that the worst of it's over by then. Um, I think it should be fine. Once When you're in holidays, it's a little different anyway because you spend most of the time popping in and out in, in the water. So it's not really such a big deal. Um, so that's what I'm telling myself anyway. Um, but, um, but yeah, that's it for me today. And I will see you next week for the final live before we head away on holidays. Thank you for joining me today. Bye. Thank you.